Life Ministries. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. Feel free to worship. Those of you that are joining us online today, come on, let's worship the Lord as we welcome the Lord into this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up our hands and our hearts as we declare today, welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. Come on, just tell the Lord, welcome today. Say, welcome. Into this broken vessel, you desire to abide in the praises of your people. Come on, let's lift. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we are. Together, let's declare welcome. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire. So we lift our hands, so we lift our 
saying praise the Lord praise the hallelujah Lord. praise the Lord amen yes. hallelujah yes. thank you yes. Jesus hallelujah. praise the Lord everybody hallelujah amen. Psalms 57 verses 1 through 11 yes and we're going to read that all together thank you Jesus Psalms 57 verses 1 through 11 yes. and the word of the Lord reads be merciful unto me O God. God be merciful unto me, me. For my soul trusted in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I die even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps, my soul is bowed down. They have been a pit before me into the midst whereof they are following themselves. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing in your praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, sultry in heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens. And thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Hallelujah. We want to exalt the Lord just for a minute. Father God, we bless you this morning. Thank you, God, for your presence, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for manifesting yourself among us, O God. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you, O God. And we love to bless you. We love to praise you. We love to lift you. Thank you, 
say, I was created. And then tell the Lord, say, I was created, Lord. I was created to make your praise. Not my praise. Not her praise. Not his praise. But I was created to make your praise. Oh, my God. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I am fearfully. I am fearfully. And I am wonderfully made. Hallelujah. I was created for his glory. I was created for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Do you know that God gives glory when you praise him? Hallelujah. He said, those that offer praise, hallelujah, you give me glory. Come on, that's what God says in Psalms 50. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you praise him, you give him glory. How many are willing to praise him today so that God gives glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive the glory. Receive your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus, receive, receive, receive the glory. Woo, hallelujah. Does anybody know that all the glory belongs to God? Even though each and every one of you are glory carriers, tell somebody, so the glory doesn't belong to me. Come on, the glory does not belong to me. The glory belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. He put glory in me to return glory to him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when I open my mouth and when I put my hands together, when everything inside of me has breath to praise the Lord, my God is glorified. He is made high. He is lifted up and he is magnified above all the earth. He is magnified in our hearts. He is magnified in the church. He is magnified in the lives of all those to whom he is introduced. Then you praise the Lord. To make, oh God, your praise glorious. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorious. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's glory in the house today. Because glory is being sent to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Woo. Hallelujah. Receive your glory. Receive your glory, oh God. Receive your glory. and receive your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, we understand what our purpose is when we understand what we were created for. And we understand that the God who created us, that he knew us even before he formed us in the womb. When we recognize that when he brought man forth from the dust of the ground, when he got intimate with the dust of the ground, when God began to form man, come on, I need you to get a mental picture of this. When God formed man from the dust of the ground, the Bible says, hallelujah, that he breathed into man's nostrils the breath, what, of life. And what happened to man? Man became a living soul. You need to understand that you are alive today, hallelujah, because the animate spirit of God was breathed into you. Come on now. Hallelujah. That spirit of life was breathed into you. Tell somebody, I'm on borrowed breath right now. I'm on borrowed breath right now. Hallelujah. Come on now. I'm on borrowed breath. When I inhale and exhale, I recognize it's not mine, but it is borrowed. Hallelujah. God has given it to me temporarily so that I can live for him. Hallelujah. So I recognize that I cannot live without him. Amen. I can't live without you, Jesus. So we declare today that I cannot live without you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. Can't live without you. Bring that up a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We're in the throne room. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just worship the Lord with you and your holiness. We have a right and a responsibility to worship. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Pastor Michelle. Declare this for me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. 
Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you for your life, Jesus. Thank you for your life, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, you were here, you were here. Hallelujah, Lord, you were here, you were here. You are worthy, Jesus. Come on, just tell the Lord you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, just sing your song to him. Then tell him, say, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy of the glory, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Worthy of the honor, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, just begin. Hallelujah, just worship, worship, worship. Worship in the beauty and holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, there's something wonderful about being able to worship. Hallelujah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Worship, worship. Those of you online, just worship. The Bible lets us know that God is a spirit and they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. You are the 
piedras brindas no ar You are the
Supreme Court justice, oh God. Those, oh Lord Jesus, are doing a job, Lord Jesus, to meet out justice, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you would work on all hearts, oh God. That you would convict the hearts, Lord Jesus, of those who would try to do deal, Lord. Not just to the justices, but anyone on this world, Lord Jesus. We know that you are able, oh God. We know, Lord Jesus, that our prayers are being heard, oh God. We know, Lord Jesus, that you know how to stop evil. So we're not going to stop praying, oh God. We're going to speak petitioning you. We're going to thank you, Lord Jesus, for abundance, even in the midst of famine, oh God. We're going to thank you for provision, oh God. We're going to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the outpour of your spirit. We're going to thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. Even when there's a dirt in the land, Lord Jesus, when Lord Jesus, saints don't want to hear the word of God. We're going to thank you, Lord, for the word that comes forth, oh God. Father, I pray that you shake your people. Shake us, Lord Jesus. Wake us, oh God. Lord, 
Say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way.
love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, you me.
has been dedicated, not only this house, yes. tell somebody this house, yes. yeah, this, yes. house this house, yes. this vessel yes. so we just yield to we the auspices and the direction and the moving of the Holy Spirit yes. Yes. Thank you. hallelujah, we celebrated Pentecost on last week yes. hallelujah, yes. tell somebody Pentecost never stops Hallelujah. Pentecost has been going on for almost 2,000 years since the Lord first outpoured His Spirit. Hallelujah. 50 days following His crucifixion. 50 days after the Passover. Hallelujah. Pentecost. When He told His disciples to go into Jerusalem, and to wait there until they be endowed with power from on high. Hallelujah. And we all know the rest of the story. That as they prayed in the upper room seven days. Some people say ten days, but they forget that Jesus was in the grave for three days. You've got to subtract three days from that 50. At least 47 days. Jesus walked upon this earth 40 days before he ascended back up into heaven, at least seven days. They were in the upper room for seven days. Hallelujah. But on that, come on down. On the, someone tell somebody, on the seventh day of being in the upper room. Come on. The Hallelujah. 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 God completed something. God, come on now. Come on now. He said it is finished on the cross. <laughs> Oh my God. And he gave up the ghost on the cross. But tell somebody, amen. It took 47 days later. Uh, or it took 50 days later. Amen. In order for his spirit. Hallelujah. That mighty wind. That fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That come to permeate the hearts of all of those who were willing to believe. All those who were willing to obey. All of those who were willing to pray and ask him. Lord, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Yes, that is true. He said, I will come again unto you. Tell somebody, oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Not only did he come, but he's still here. Because he's still living on the inside of me. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Tell somebody, he lives. He lives. he lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. God, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Just turn to your neighbor say, because he lives within my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. The longer I stand up here, the more songs just keep coming to mind. Amen. Just to remind us, amen, of who he is. That he's alive. The God that we serve is not dead. Oh. He's not a dead God. He's alive. He's real. He's living. And I know that people live today as if God doesn't live. Hallelujah. They act as if God is not coming back. But I'm here to remind you today that he's coming. He's coming. Again. Yes. Soon. Somebody may ask the question, how soon? Sooner than yesterday. Hallelujah. Yes. Soon. Yeah. Therefore, we ought to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Every single Tell somebody, day. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. Come on, encourage somebody. Say it like you encourage them. Say, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. 
ready. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. And then talk to yourself and tell him. Say, make sure you're ready. David had to encourage himself. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Make sure you're ready. Make sure. Make sure. Hallelujah. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds. Know your Lord. That grips. The solid rock. Yeah. In times like these, we need yeah. a savior. We need a savior. Love. In times yeah. like these, we need an anchor. Amen. Yes. Yes. I mean, know that Jesus yes. is our anchor. Yes. Deacon's having a good time back there in the back. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. My God. My God. Just look across the congregation. Yes. I see the smiles of the saints. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That smiles of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Smiling yes. because yes. Jesus is good. Yes. Hallelujah. He's so real. Yes, he real. is. Yes, he yes. is. In my soul today. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. My God. My God. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to go into the word of the Lord in just a moment. Yes. Yes. Just before we do that, amen. We have, tell somebody, we have some announcements. Oh. <laughs> we have some announcements. I, I especially want the brothers to be listening in, amen, on these upcoming announcements. Those of you that are online, come on, stay tuned for just a few moments, amen. We have our announcements that are going right into the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's play those announcements at this time. Invite someone to Word for Life Ministries. Aspiring ministers, get ready for our ministerial training. Come to Word for Life Ministries to celebrate all of our fathers on Father's Day. hosting a men's clothing drive for unsheltered men and fathers. We are accepting all donations through June 19th. All items will be donated to WCU San Diego. See Minister Simone for more information. Calling all brothers and the women, but especially the brothers, to volunteer at WCU San Diego on June 21st. On this day, we will be providing all of our clothing donations to this ministry. And we want to be a blessing to all of the men and fathers that are unsheltered. If you would like to participate, please see Mr. Simone for more information. We hope you can come. Join us for Sunday School. Join us on the prayer line. you to attend our in-person Bible study. Live streaming is also available. Attention young people, join us for our youth Bible studies. You can continue to support Word for Life Ministries using Givelify. If you are a first-time Givelify user, Follow these three simple steps. Thank you for listening to the announcements today. Your new life in Christ can begin by committing your whole heart, mind, and soul completely to the Lord. Salvation is as easy as one, two, three. First, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, confess your sin, and confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. Second, repent, change your mind, and turn from sin toward God. And third, be born again by water baptism in Jesus' name and by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Our ministers are available to talk with you today, and we are available for prayer and baptism. The baptismal pool is ready. Are you?
Father, you're going to have some additional announcement. Let's receive Minister Simone at this time. Amen. Amen. I'll be very, very brief. But yes, just to reiterate about participating in the WCU San Diego um, Volunteer um, Ministry, thank you so much for all of you who have already provided your um, donations. I just want to reiterate again, I'm so thankful that we are doing this. I had an opportunity to um, volunteer on last Tuesday. Again, all of the bins for... Uh, the men were full, but before we were even done with the event, shoes were running out, cloaks, shirts were running out, pants were running out. And again, I, you know, when I would serve someone, and it, it, or, and it would be a gentleman, and they would say, "Do you have any underwear?" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, we ran out of your size. What size do you have?" Actually, we ran out of all of the sizes. So really, what we are doing is going to make such a huge yeah, impact all right, all to right. this ministry. They do serve a lot of, a lot more men than they do women yeah. there, and so. So um, definitely just be ready to uh, serve and just and have a servant's heart. Be ready to show the love of God there too. Um, there are people that are coming off the streets. There are people that are bringing in spirits, you know, and um, oh, yeah. we want to also be in um, <laughs> spiritual uh, warfare. Um, even just this last Tuesday when I was there, there was an altercation that was trying to break out. Mm -hmm. And after the whole event was just being so peaceful, and even we prayed before we did, uh, went out there, we prayed yeah, for down. peace. And then I had an opportunity to pray with somebody, and he was asking for peace. And then at the very end of it, then there's like this little altercation between our guests. And so, of course, we're, we're coming in, we're, we're breaking it up, and we're trying to, you know, rebuke that. Amen. But again, it was just a reminder that this is spiritual yes. warfare. Yes. Somebody yes. else asked me for prayer for, um, they want to be deli they want to um, have sobriety. They want to be delivered from whatever, you know, substances that they're on. So there are people there that aren't just there for the natural need, but they are definitely there for the spiritual need. And again, they are unapologetically Christian about this. They share their testimonies. They read scriptures to them. They pray for them. And then if they rub to sign up for recovery, they will literally sign them up that very night um, for recovery. So this is definitely um, not only a natural ministry, but it's a spiritual ministry. God is truly birthing a passion in me All for right. this as well as he's yeah. um, continued to use me with this ministry. Continue to remember Laura and Kevin. Yes. Just their, what they do there is just, it's so awestrucking when I see how they minister and how they show the love of God to everyone. And also too, it's just, it blows your mind how God provides yes. for this ministry. Every they, they take every Everything through donations and yeah. through volunteers and when I tell you there is so much food to, to serve the guests to give them doggy bags and to serve the volunteers even the volunteers get a chance to partake in some of the meals that are there and it's again all because of donations and and people just having just such a willing heart so um, again if you do have any questions about just what this experience is gonna be like we just come and see me We I encourage you they serve the dinner at 5 but I encourage you to try how to get there um, at least by 4.30 just so that you can um, fellowship with the other volunteers, that you can get acclimated, receive the um, instructions, be prayed up, and just, just ready to go. So, amen. 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 And we'll be talking about this a little bit more and then on Wednesday night as well as on next Sunday, which is Father's Day. And I want to say thank you to all of you that have, that have donated thus far. We have a room full of clothes, but yes. guess what? We need some more. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. And understanding that they're in short supply of underwear, I know what I need to go out yes. and get now. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. So let's be prepared for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. I want to encourage the saints of God. Amen. Let's continue to come on out to Bible study. Amen. Uh, also, I want to encourage the saints of God to participate. Amen. Yes. I know that you can't make every night, but participate on the prayer line. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Participate on the prayer line because prayer is in need. Amen. Tell somebody, prayer is in need. Prayer is in need. Prayer is in need. Now more than ever before, we need to pray. Yes. All right. If you would please get your Bibles. We're going to be going into the Word of the Lord. Tell somebody, put on your seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. Somebody pray for me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to be going to three passages of Scripture. We're going to be going to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Again, Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 34. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 34. And then, finally, the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, 
at verses 13 through 16. Again, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Amen. While you are finding that, we want to encourage those of you that are watching online today. Amen. We're praying, hallelujah, uh, that you have the word of the Lord with you as well. Amen. So whether it be a hard copy, amen, the actual Bible itself, amen, in hard copy form, or whether you have a smart device or you're watching on the computer, you got an extra screen off to the side or an extra little window, amen, bring up your Bible app and come on and read along with us, amen. You need to understand that this is the Word of God. This is not just something that Pastor Joel just comes up with and just spouts off over the pulpit, amen. We're talking about the Word of the Lord. On today, I want to address some things, amen, relative to modern day culture and some things that are being espoused. And how does the church, amen, how does the church respond? What does the church do? How do we as Christians, amen, deal with what is going on? Amen. Does it line up with the word? How do we do things? In accords with the word of God. People need to know this because they're hearing a lot of things out there that do not emanate from the word of God. It sounds good, but it's not good. Amen. Romans chapter 13. In the beginning at verse number 11, it says, and that knowing the time that now, somebody say now, 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 now it is right. high time yeah. to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Somebody say now. 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 It is time. Tell somebody else, say awake. Awake. So it's time to awake out of sleep. For the Paul goes on to say in verse number 12, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on... The armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in cambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But look at verse number 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't make provision for the flesh. That's right. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 34. Paul again says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. He says, For some have not the knowledge of God. And then he says, I speak this to your shame. This is a reminder to the church of God that we need to wake up. Awake. But what do we awake to? We awake to righteousness. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13. Through 16, but all things that are reproved are made manifest or made known by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yeah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bow our heads unto you. Father, I decrease that you would increase to receive the glory. Lord, I pray yes. that you would speak your yes. mind and your counsel unto this generation. Father, I ask that you would speak to this people, O oh God. I ask that your word would permeate the airways and the internet, O oh God. I ask, Lord, that all those, O oh God, under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they will not hear me, but that they will hear you. Father, speak your word, speak your heart, speak your mind, speak all of your counsel. And I pray, Lord, that you would draw somebody, Lord, draw a multitude of people, O oh God, into remembrance of your word, O oh God. Turn our hearts unto you again. Help us to do your will. Help us to honor you. Do it by the preaching of the word of God. And then help us to believe. For the Bible declares that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And so, Father, we preach as you give to us. We honor you and we bless you. 
We ask these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone saying amen. Amen. And amen. I am soliciting your prayers today because as I share the topic with you momentarily, I think you're going to understand the heaviness of what I need to talk about today. And I say this with all humility, but I recognize that there are some who are going to hear today, whether in this place or whether online, that may not necessarily agree with what I will mention today, but what I will say this, agree with the Word of God. Amen. Agree with the Word of God. This is what is important because so many things are espoused today that do not have basis in the Word of God. The topic I want to take today to address a modern day issue, I want to ask this question, woke or awake, which one are you? Woke or awake? Which one are you? Give me a little moment this morning to talk about and explain what we mean by this word that has now become a part of not just the vernacular of a particular race of people, but a vernacular of an entire movement. Come on, come on, come on. You see, we live at a time when our present society is enamored with this ideal of being woke. Mm -hmm. But I have to ask a question. And my question is, that what does it mean in the present context in which it is utilized within our present society. What does it mean? A lot of people repeat stuff and don't really truly understand what it means. Mm -hmm. yep. Come on. So let me talk a little bit about this term. Let me talk about its development and then let's move into where we are today. This term, as we are all aware, especially those of us of the African American community, a man of the black community, we recognize that this term, a man initially was slain, that's been around actually since the 1930s. A man, but it has made its way via modern updates, a man, into various dictionaries, one of the first being the Oxford Dictionary in 2017. This word woke that everybody began to use, a man received a new, or let me say, an updated definition. Right. So let me just share with you what three of the current dictionaries have to say about this particular word. Merriam-Webster says that woke means to be aware of and actively attentive to important facts and issues. And then parenthetically it says especially of issues of racial and social justice. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. Mm -hmm. Dictionary.com says this. It says having or marked by an active awareness of systematic injustices and prejudices, especially those related to civil and human rights. And then the Oxford Dictionary, which was updated in 2017. Originally, Oxford said that to be woke meant to be well informed or to be up to date. I agree with that. But most recently, we find that Oxford, a man that they changed the definition to mean alert to racial or social discrimination and injustice. This term woke as an ideal, it is the genesis of African American or what we refer to as black vernacular English. And man, they even had acronyms, African American vernacular English. You know, back in the day, they even tried to call it Ebonics. They tried to call it all sorts of things. But now we have a modern term, African-American vernacular English. Again, as I shared before, the word was first believed to originate a man in its slang term in the 1930s to bring awareness 
to social political issues that were affecting the black culture and black communities of that time. Amen. We had not long since had come out a man of slavery. We had begun to build communities, a man wherein African American culture was thriving. There was entrepreneurship, amen. Many of you heard about Black Wall Street and all these other places, amen. But there were things that were beginning to happen, amen, as uh, the black community began to become more upwardly mobile, amen, there were those, and we certainly are aware of those, and this is not what I come to preach on today, but we recognize that, amen, we must agree that there were those, amen, who wanted to put African Americans in the black community back in, as someone would say, their place. Amen. So people began using this term about being woke to understand that there were social politi political issues that needed to be addressed for that day, specifically related to the plight. I want to say this again, specifically related to the plight of our culture. Yes, yes, yes. The first known printed use of this word woke, a man being attributed to black vernacular in English, was in an article that was printed by the New York Times in 1962. I mean, they decided to print an article about a man modern slang usage in black vernacular. And so, a man, they, uh, one of the words that they utilized was this word woke. Mm -hmm. And we find that from, this, from that time on, we consider uh, that there was this later usage that it began to increase, again, to bring light to issues affecting the African American or the black community. But what we find is that most recently, over the past several years, that the word woke and its ideal have been hijacked. All right. Been hijacked to now represent what I believe to be an extreme progressive socialist political agenda that attempts to censor anyone who does not agree with the agenda. That includes you and me. Because when you believe in the Bible, come on now, people want to censor you because the Bible does not agree with this stuff that's being espoused today. Yeah. I told you this wasn't going to be an easy that's message to preach, so y'all going to have to pray for me because I know yeah. folks are probably going to blow up the internet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But it's got to be preached. Amen. That's what Pastors need to stand up. Churches need to stand right. up and that's begin right. to talk about holiness yeah. again. Yeah. Churches need to rise up and begin to remind the people, amen, of what it is that we need to be doing in this day. Yes. We've gotten focused on other things. We've gotten distracted by other things, and we've forgotten, amen, what it is that we ought to be doing as the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. So we find, for example, today that a man mainstream culture believes that you are woke. Amen. If, if, if some of these things uh, you believe in, you, you are considered woke if you subscribe to the modern assertion that gender is an ancient societal construct that must be redefined. Mm, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, woke culture says that you are woke today if you acknowledge, amen, that the use of pronouns as preferred by those who do not acknowledge their birth gender or who choose a gender based on what one believes that they are, amen, at the present time, you're woke, amen, if you allow all of those different pronouns, amen, to supersede correct English usage, amen, so that people can use whatever they want because that's the way they feel at the moment. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I'm going to preach it today. So y'all got to just hold on. Buckle up. Put your seatbelt on. I'm going to preach it today. So just hold tight. Don't turn me off. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this today. Hallelujah. Amen. Woke society believes that you're woke. Amen. If you believe that the nuclear family comprising a biological male father and a biologically amen, female mother who are in a loving biblical marital relationship, amen, they have children, uh, they believe that that type of nuclear family represents a relic of the past and that it must be torn down and replaced with a novel modern construct of family or the lack thereof. It's an abomination from the pit of hell. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's yeah. an attempt of Satan to try to destroy what God has created. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm going to call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it for yeah. what it is. Yeah. Well, culture says, 
Amen. That the way to cure past and present injustices to minority and marginalized groups of people is by labeling the majority as racist and bigoted and hateful and subjugating the entire majority to the experiences of the minority. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Amen. That rather than addressing what has occurred in the past and working together to move forward yeah. to address all the issues of society, including ours, what happens in exchange if we decide we gonna do to you like you did to us. Right. Tell somebody that ain't Christian at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said, "Love your neighbor." Yes. Hallelujah. Not only that, it said to love your enemies. Yes. Do good unto them that persecute you. Yes. Hallelujah. Those that despitefully use you. But we find today that people want to get even. All right. Hallelujah. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Hallelujah. How many know that that was done away with a long time ago? Amen. Jesus yeah. said, I teach you another thing. What did he teach us? He said, a new commandment. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, I give unto you that you love one another. Yeah. Hallelujah. Christ loved us and he tells us to love one another. Amen. Oh my God. Oh, Hallelujah. God. We find that, amen, oftentimes this, this term, amen, or this desire to cure past injustices, amen, uh, that, that this term, we call it social justice today. Yeah, we call it social justice. And, and, and if it were true social justice, I would be okay with it. But, but this is what has happened. You see, it has morphed into reverse racism and bigotry. So while many, amen, advocate for social justice would call this leveling the playing field, in practice what has happened is that it involves the implementation of unequal outcomes that further segregate rather than draw people together. Yeah. Right. Hear what I'm saying, Church of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anytime you participate in something that divides rather than brings together, hallelujah, you are fostering division. You yes. are fostering separation. You yes. are doing the exact same thing that you accuse others of doing. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it today. Hallelujah. We call it social justice. Hallelujah. To let our children do whatever they want to do. To the point, amen, that, that social justice, amen, has caused our police and our system of justice not to even want, hallelujah, to persecute the way they ought to be persecuted. Listen, when you do wrong, yes. let me say it again. When you do wrong, you ought to be subject to the law of the land. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about injustice where somebody is unfairly, hallelujah, put in jail or someone who is unfairly un incarcerated. I'm yes. talking about those who are now running about, hallelujah, breaking in the stores, yes. looting, taking yes. stuff that don't yes. belong to them. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Killing people in our own neighborhoods on the street. And we got to nerve to talk about somebody else. And we don't want to address the issues in our own community. Yes. There is a problem and we need to start at home. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We need to start at home. Yes. The church needs to be a catalyst, hallelujah, for starting the discussion that is real, that we need to deal with the issues that's happening in our community and stop blaming everybody else. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we've got into this blame everybody else mentality that has creeped into the church. And now when somebody tries to encourage you to be holy, you say, you judging me. Right. No, I'm trying to tell you as a brother or a sister in Christ that you need to walk holy because Jesus is coming again one day and you're distracted. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Let's get together yeah. and let's do what God needs for us to do in this day and time. Yeah. Stop being distracted yeah. by yeah. goodness. I I have decided that I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Of hearing the saints mm -hmm. My God. talk about that it's okay to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. You see, woke civilization says that it's okay to abort a child even until the time of birth. Wow. What? in the world is going on in the mindset of this country and of this nation and of people across the world. You know what it reminds me of in the Bible? Hallelujah. 
when God destroyed whole civilizations because they caused their people, they caused their children, children. to walk in the fire to Molech. So when you begin to give your children up because you have chosen, hallelujah, that you wanted to give that child up rather than choosing, hallelujah, to prepare yourself and to use proper protection and to make the right decision before time. Listen, choice didn't begin after the pregnancy. Choice began when you made the decision to do what you wanted to do. What happened to your choice? Yes. Yes. All right. yes. Hallelujah. Help Jesus. Help Jesus. You ain't really woke. Hallelujah. If you believe that your choice begins only after conception, that oh my God. Hallelujah. Jesus. My body, my choice. Yes, your body. It's a borrowed body. Jesus. It's a borrowed body with borrowed breath. The breath doesn't even belong to you. You belong to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Let me ask this question. My body, my choice, people. What would have happened if your mother had have said my body, my choice and aborted you before you got here? See, we, 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 oh my God. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, gotta, I gotta talk about this. See, we want, hallelujah, we want our cake and we want to eat it. We want to be able to do what we want to do, hallelujah, and not reap the repercussions of our bad decision making. You need to understand that it is time for you, hallelujah, to get into gear and cause your choice to matter well before you ever get to the point where there's a possibility of conception. Yes, Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 God says, choose the good. And not the evil. Yeah, yeah. He says, Be oh, he said, I stand before you. Hallelujah. I've given you this day life and death. And Jesus said, God said, choose, choose life. Choose. Choose. choose life. If you want choice, it should begin a long way back. I gotta hurry up here. I'm not gonna even talk about the babies. What happened to the baby's choice? I just want to throw that out there. What happened to them? You need to understand. Listen, let me say this. Because I know that there are people out there that are wrestling with when does life really begin. Let me tell you what the Bible says about life. Come on, come on. So you need to understand but, but that before even the egg and the cell come to, but before the sperm and the egg come together. <laughs> come hallelujah. That even at that point, God says, before I formed you in the womb. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. He says, I knew you. Yeah. That means that that child that was aborted, God knows the name of that child, knows yeah. the personality of that child, even before you came together. And yeah. when you aborted it, you aborted something that God already deemed to be in existence. Existence and a lie. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. There is no discussion. There is no debate. Hallelujah. In the scientific field, we call single cell animals, we call them alive. We call multi cell animals alive. But when it comes to human life, why is it we got to wait till? Amen. Oh, can I tell what it is? Right. Right. Jesus. Jesus. I couldn't believe it. When I heard there are places in this country that will allow abortion even after the ninth month. Yep. Yep. That is a fully formed, viable baby. Yep. Yep. Hallelujah. God help us. Tell somebody, say, God help us. And I want to say this to those of you. Hallelujah. To those of you that have found yourself today, and maybe in the past you made that decision, you need to understand, stop listening to woke culture. Because woke culture will get you into trouble. And maybe in the past you didn't know what you know now, but now that you know it, you know what we can do? We can repent. Because God is able to forgive us of the things of the past, but we need to be willing to move forward. But we have to move forward in a right mindset. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. We've gotten so used to being woke that we don't know what it means to be awake. Yes. The Bible doesn't tell us to be woke. What it does tell us <laughs> is to be awake. Yes. But I need you to understand the sense in which the Bible tells us to be 
In Romans chapter 13, Paul says it like this. You need to understand that we're dealing and living in a very difficult time. And just as difficult as I believe this time is presently that we're living in, guess what? The Apostle Paul was also living through a period of time that was difficult. He was living in a period of time in which Gentile culture was doing just about anything that they wanted to do. Hallelujah. There was pornography and there was all sorts of things and homosexuality that, that were prevalent even during that time. Hallelujah. There were people who were coming into the church, having come out of the world and still dealing with some of those issues. And Paul was trying to set things straight. The Corinthian church was a very spiritual church, but it was also a very fleshly church. And Paul had to constantly deal with the flesh side of the church to get them to migrate over to the spirit realm. And Paul would often remind the church, hallelujah, you need to understand, hallelujah, the day in which you live, you're sleeping on the job. But I need to remind you to do something, church. What ought you to do? He said, and knowing the time. What time? That time that is present now and the time that we know that God is coming. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Yes, yes, yes. Paul was not referring to physical sleep. He was referring to the process of awakening up spiritually. Hallelujah. To understand the day and the time in which we live. To understand that Jesus is coming again. And if we continue to be distracted by the things of the world, we'll miss what God has for us today. Yes. Awake out of sleep for now. What now? Now is our salvation nearer. Tell somebody our salvation is nearer. Yes. Yes. Is nearer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your salvation, it is nearer than when you first believed. Listen, hallelujah. I've been saved now, oh my goodness, almost 45 years, 45 years, almost 46 years. And I can remember for most of my life, I remember my great-grandparents and my grandparents and my parents saying the Lord is coming soon. Yeah, yeah. But the day in which we live in now, where everything seems to be falling into place. That now when that cry goes out that the Lord is coming soon, saints, we got to live like we believe it's true. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to awake out of our slumber. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, get the crud out of your eyes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, take a shower. Take a spiritual shower. Hallelujah. Drink some spiritual coffee. Whatever you need to do. Hallelujah. But you need to awake to what's going on. Amen. Be prepared. Why? Because the coming of the Lord is soon. Your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. Yes. Yes. The coming of the Lord is closer today than it was yesterday. Yes. Yes. Look what he says here. He says, for the night is far spent. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, you see, in the night, things are difficult to see. But there is a day in which the Lord is coming. And so the Apostle Paul uses, hallelujah, a metaphorical statement to say that the night, hallelujah, that the night is far spent. But the day is at hand. Hallelujah. So we need to understand, hallelujah, that there's a time that is getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. So Paul says, now that you understand this, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Listen, stop listening to the distractions of the world. Cast off the works of darkness. Many of the saints today have been caught up. Amen. And doing things that are not of the Lord. Yes. God is not pleased. Yes. God has never been pleased with sin. And he will not be pleased with sin. And it's important for us to cast off those things. Paul says, wake up and understand where you are. Right. Well, understand what time you're in. Understand that the coming of the Lord is soon. Cast off the works of darkness. Yes. Hallelujah. Wake up. Wake up. Hallelujah. He says, let us put on the armor of light. 
Hallelujah. Yes. You are supposed to have on you an armor of light. What happens when you have light? Light reproves darkness. So if you cast off the works of darkness and you put on the armor of light, you put on what is necessary to reprove darkness. Yes. So when the darkness tries to come against you, you yes. have the armor of light. The Bible let us know, as we talked about a few weeks ago, amen, that you are lights in this world. Jesus is the light, but you are also to light. Yes. You become the light by putting on the armor of light. How do you get the armor of light? You get it from him. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Your walk ought to be as if you understand, hallelujah, that Christ is coming soon. Amen. Your walk should be as in the day. You know why that's important? Have you ever noticed? Remember when we were sinners? We like to do stuff in darkness. Why? <laughs> hallelujah. Because we wanted the stuff that we did to be hidden. We wanted our sin to be hidden. Hallelujah. But when it's daylight, it's in the open. And we tended not to do certain things in the daylight that we did in the darkness. Amen. But Paul said, amen, that we need to learn, amen, how to walk as in the day. Walk honestly as in the day. No matter what part of life you are in, walk honestly as if you are walking in the day. Yes. And you need to understand that God has already told us in his word. He said that I see all things alike, whether it's in the darkness or in the light. There is nothing that is hid from God. So even though you might try to hide from your brother or sister because you don't want them to know what you're doing, God knows what you're doing all the time. Hallelujah. He says, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in cambering and wantonness. Notice that he says here, not in strife. And envying, but yet I find that woke mm. culture tends to lead towards strife sure and envying. Yes. Oh yes. 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 Check out number 14. Paul says, but, 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 leave that other stuff alone. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, don't put on wokeness, put on Jesus. Amen. If you listen, if you really want things to change in our society, that's what happens. Hallelujah. Put on Jesus and share the word. Yeah. Because people's hearts are not. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If you're waiting on the government to no. put something in place that will cause people to change, it ain't going to happen. Because except you change the heart of a person, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. you won't change his deeds. That's right. Therefore, yeah. this is why it's important, amen, for every man, woman, boy, and girl to come to Jesus because Jesus takes the heart. He turns it and he makes it new. He transforms it. He makes you different. And when he All makes right. you different, you begin to think differently. You begin yeah. to walk yeah. differently. Yeah. You begin to act differently. Yeah. You begin to treat your neighbor differently. Yeah. You begin to treat, hallelujah, those that you don't know differently. You treat your yeah. enemies differently when you have the Spirit of God resting on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're awake. We want the government to do everything for us. No. When God has given you everything you need. Hallelujah. He's giving you the ability. Hallelujah. Now I recognize that there are people in need. Don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. I understand that there are people in need, but they should not be perpetually on the system. They should be able to get on. Hallelujah. Amen. Get them back on their feet. Hallelujah. Teach a skill. Help them to make more money than they can on welfare. So that way when they get off, hallelujah, they can support family and be blessed and be able to enjoy the benefits. Amen. That this society can provide. Amen. Yes. But our system is set to keep people perpetually, hallelujah, poor. To keep people perpetually bound. You need to understand that's a trick of the enemy. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I told you this was not going to be easy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Amen. Amen. See, woke society has gone back to that old mantra that if it feels good, do it. Let us do what we want to do. Woke society is trying to get rid. This is what you need to understand, church. This is why it bothers me when the church begins to latch on to this and follow. Because what's happening, woke culture is slowly breaking down the influence of the church. It is trying to yeah. do away right. with biblical requirements. Yeah. Right. It is time to do away with the concept of morality. There is no morality without the Bible. There is only relative truth and no absolute truth when you try to do away with God's word. You yeah. see, the enemy knows that. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. The enemy of our souls knows that if he can delete, hallelujah, or try to delete God from our consciousness, delete God from our culture, delete his word from our system of government and rules and laws that help set up this country, he knows that he can get you to do whatever he wants. And when he gets you to do whatever he wants, you think you're free and you really bow. Hallelujah. Bound by sin and on your way to hell. Hallelujah. My God, the only freedom is in Jesus. The only freedom is in Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 15, 34. Paul says, awake to righteousness. You see, people are trying to wake up, amen, to this false sense of idealism that doesn't work and has been proven over and over in previous governments not to work. That's right. Marxism doesn't work. Socialism doesn't work. Why are we trying to bring it here? Because people forget history. They forget history because we try to rewrite history. Let me leave that one alone. Awake to righteousness. In orbit, listen, when you wake up, hallelujah. You ought to be awakening to the things of God. Yeah. Awake to his righteousness, not our own. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Yeah. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. You need to understand it's not about your way. It's about God's way. Yeah. And I can say it like this. It's God's way or the highway. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It needs to be God's way. Yeah. 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 When I used to counsel people who were in trouble, amen, marriages in trouble, just things going to pot. And one thing I would ask them, I was like, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. So you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting there to be a different outcome. Right. I said, why don't you try God's way? Right. I guarantee if you try God's way, you'll see a change. Yeah. And you know what? When they would move forward in obedience and try God's way, all of a sudden they began to see God move in their lives. Thank you, Jesus. You need to understand, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he needs to repent. When God sends his word, he said, my word will not return void, but it will go and accomplish that where unto it has been sent. God's word, when he sends it, is going to do what it said it's going to do, but you got to learn how to believe his word, act upon his word, trust his word, and know that God's word is relevant for today. Man. It bothers me when people in our own government say that the church and the Bible need to change to get with the times. Uh 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 uh. The times need to change back to get to where God is and where Scripture is and where the Bible is. God's words doesn't change. He said, "Heaven and earth would pass away before my word would pass away." Hallelujah. God doesn't change. What was wrong 10,000 years ago? What was wrong a million years ago? What was wrong billions of years ago is still wrong today. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God didn't change. Thank you, Jesus. So what changed? We did. Yes, right. Thank you. Our eyes were looking at right. us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Awake to righteousness. And notice he says here, and sin not. When you hate your brother, your sister, you're Uh-oh. sinning. Can't go there. Again. When you hate your enemy, guess what? You're sinning. That's Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. When you want to get even with somebody because they wronged you, no you're parties. sinning. No yeah. us, Hallelujah. Help us. Come on, come on. I just need to make a plan. When you're jumping in the bed with people who don't belong to you because they didn't put a ring on it, you're not married, guess what? It's called sin. Yeah. It was sin then, it's still sin today. Right. Shacking up is sin. Fornicating is sin. Listen, the definition of fornication, oh my God, hallelujah, is sex without marriage. Sin. Period. Adultery. When you're married and you go outside of your marriage to be with someone else, that's sin. It always has been. It always will be. It is sin. You can't justify it. Sin. If you don't tell the truth, it's called a what? A lie. If you only tell a half truth with the intent to deceive, guess what that's called? A lie. And the Bible says that all liars shall have their part in the lake with burnished with fire and brimstone. Yes, sir. The Bible has not changed. God has not changed. Somehow we've been lulled into a false belief that if we just say it long enough, Hallelujah, then it must be true. We just say it long enough. Amen. God gonna forgive me. I can do whatever I want. God gonna forgive me. 
This is the problem I have with the hyper grace movement. All right, all right, that you can do whatever you want and God's going to forgive you. Just keep doing it. Even the Apostle Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. Grace was not designed for you to continue in sin. Grace was designed to allow you, amen, to, to not to have to undergo judgment, to allow you time for mercy so that God can save you and get it right. And then that from then that point on, you can walk uprightly before God. Right. And if you happen to be taken in a fault, not because you decided that's what you want to do, right. but you find yourself in a fault, and then the Bible says, if we confess our sins, right. He is faithful and just to forgive us yeah. of our sins and to cleanse us from yeah. all unrighteousness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Grace does not allow you to continue in sin and to keep sin because that becomes willful sin. Yes, it does. And when you sin willfully, the Bible says there's no more forgiveness. Right. Come on now, you know your word. So those of you that think that you can do whatever you, amen, big and bad enough to do because, uh, uh, you know, because you, you, you've, been, you've been predestinated, you missing the predestination bus. Let me just leave that one there right there. That's a whole other message by itself. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 and 13, but all things... That are reproved. All things that are reproved are made manifest. That means to be made known by the light. Minister Simone preached last week that there's a shaking going on. Yeah. You know what God is doing? God is shining his spot. Ah, yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Come on, Lord. Pushing that button. Mm -hmm. Spotlight. Yes. And when he shows the spotlight, everything that's not like him is exposed. Thank you, Jesus. Keep on. Shines the spotlight. And when he shines the spotlight on us, there are several things that God will do. God will shake because he says in the last days, I'm going to shake not only the earth, but I'm going to shake the heavens. Well, I'm yes, shaking everything. God right. is saying, I'm shaking yes, everything yes, that yes, can be shaken. Yes, Hallelujah. Remember that he said, don't worry about the wheat and the tear. He said, when the time comes, I'm going to do the separate. Guess what God is doing? God is separating the wheat from the tear. God is separating the goat from the sheep. Come on now. God is doing the separating. What side are you going to fall on? Are you going to be shaken? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you going to be illuminated by the light? What is it that you are doing? What side will you fall on? Hallelujah. Help us understand. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. God's light is doing it. Yes. God's light is beginning to show the corruption in our government. Yes. It's beginning to show the corruption in people's minds. It's beginning to show the corruption that has crept into the church. It is showing the corruption that has crept into the lives of people who once feigned to call themselves holy, who once feigned to call themselves Christian, who once feigned to call themselves filled full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What's happening is God's spotlight is shining on us and it is illuminating us for where we are. Now the question is, now that you've been illuminated with regard to where you are, what are you doing, amen, to allow God to change you back into the image that he wants you to be? What are you doing? What are you doing? Being distracted by wokeness. Wherefore he said, awake thou that sleepest. And that's what I want to say today because many people who call themselves woke are still asleep spiritually. Listen. Natural wokeness has led to spiritual apathy, yeah, yeah, yeah. spiritual decline, yeah, yeah. spiritual slumber. And then you got spittle dripping from your mouth because you're sleeping so good. Yeah. God is saying it's time to wake up. Wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to be awake. Awake thou that sleepest. And notice what he says here. He didn't say rise from life. He said rise from the dead. Rise. The Bible said that we were what? Dead in what? In our trespasses and sins. Paul said, awake thou that sleepeth and do what? A rock. Come on now. Tell somebody I was dead. I was dead, but I can be made alive again. Listen, some of you are dead, stinking in the grave spiritually. 
You need to rise up and allow the Spirit of God to raise you up again so that you can walk in newness of life. Tell somebody, awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead and notice what will happen. It says that Christ will give thee light. The one who is the light bringer, the one who is the light creator, he will take his light and give you some of his light. So that you can become like him. Come on now. Oh, my God. Well, I got to finish this up. I got to finish this up. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. In other words, understand your behavior, your mannerisms, your actions. See that you walk according to what you now know as it pertains to God's word. Walk circumspectly. Investigate yourself. Yes, Ask God to shine a light on yes, you. God, where yes, am I? Am I being woke yes, up? Do I, am I still sleeping and need to be awake? God, where day, am I in you? Day, yes. Help us, Lord. Help See them that you walk circumspectly. He says, not as fools. Thank you, Jesus. you know what the fool does? The fool has forgotten that there is a God. The fool right. has said in his heart that there yes. is no Jesus, God. We got saints, us, former Lord. saints, walking around as if there is no God. Right. And in doing so, they become fools. Not fools for Christ's sake. They become fools for the enemy's sake. Not as fools, but as wise. Notice now what he says. Listen, when you have become awake, when Christ has given you light, you know what we have to do because we wasted some time. So guess what we have to do now? Redeem the time. There's been wasted time, church. We've wasted time, saints of God. But God says, now that we are awake, yes. now that Christ has given us life, now that he has forgiven us of our sin, now that we know better, hallelujah, now that we're checking our walk in accordance with Christ, hallelujah, not trying to judge ourselves by one another, All hallelujah, right. we are using Jesus as our measuring stick. Yes. Now that we walk circumspectly, guess what we got to do? Redeem the time. Yes. Redeem the time. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It's high time to awake out of sleep. Yes. Redeem the time. Yes. Redeem the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Days are we are evil. living in an evil day. Yes, we are. So redeem the time. Tell your neighbor, say, redeem the time. Redeem the time. The time that we've wasted. Notice I said we've wasted because I'm including myself. Yes. The time that we have wasted, yes. we must redeem the time. Redeem the time. Woke folk waste time. Yes. Awake folk redeem the time. Yes. Come on. Come on. I'm going to close the first Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 through 8, and then we're closing. But other times and season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Do we all know this? Do we all, do we all agree that we know this? Yes. That the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. Come on, yes. everyone that agrees, come on, raise your hands. Those of you online, raise your hands spiritually. I may not be able to see you, but God sees you. We know this. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, get this, peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse number four. But ye, brother, but ye, but you, but you, brethren, are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief because you've been awake. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are now awake, awake. And the light of Christ mm. is shining with it. You now have on the armor of light. You are no longer asleep. You are no longer in darkness. Look at what Paul says here. But ye are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all what? The children of the light. Mm. Thank you. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Look at verse number 6. Therefore, let us not sleep. When God has awakened you from your slumber. Yes, Jesus. Tell somebody, stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. Not stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. Mm -hmm. And do not sleep. Yes. Listen, God knows you need to lay your head down at night, but that's not the kind of sleep he's talking about. Yeah. When God illuminates you yeah. to the time, and you begin to redeem the time, 
Stay awake. Yeah. Don't go back to sleep. The enemy's goal is to try to lull us oh back to sleep. Yes. Don't fall for it. Yes. Hallelujah. Keep He's playing that bedtime melody. Yes. Don't listen to it. Yes. Hallelujah. He's Keep rocking you. On you Lord. Don't let him rock your cradle. Oh. Hallelujah. Don't he used to sing a song. Close. Don't let him drive. Because if you right. let him drive, That's if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. That's right. Don't let him rock the cradle. Because if you let him rock, let you let him, him rock you, guess what? He's going to want to sit in it with you, don't yeah. you? Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Knows what Paul says as he concludes. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But verse number eight as we close. But let us who are of the day. Tell somebody, be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith yes. and love. Yes. Notice. That although we do not agree, let me say this before I close. Although we do not agree with what the LGBTQ plus minus everything else, what that community espouses, we do not hate. Yes. We do not hate. Come on, let me say that again. We do not, we do not hate. hate. We do not hate. We do not agree, we do not. but we do not hate. Right. We need to understand, just because I don't agree with your lifestyle does not mean that I don't love you. That's right. right. You should understand that because I love you, I'm trying to help you yes. so that you will make heaven your yes. goal. Yes. I love you. Yes. And you need to understand that God love loves you yes. more than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woke culture is telling you to do whatever you want, but what woke culture is doing is sending you to hell. But awake culture is saying, I love you with the love of God, and God loves you, and God knows who you are. God knows who you, he created you to be, and God wants you to live with him, and he wants to draw you into his fold. You've Amen. never known love until you've known God. That's right. Right. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Looking for love in all the wrong places, right. and the world has tried to tell you what love is. Yes. The world doesn't know what love is. Right. Because God's love is unconditional. Yes, it is. God's love continues to draw. He's real love. And there's nothing that you can do to hinder his love. He will love you unconditionally. Yes, he's right there. Hallelujah. Oh. Even in your sin, God will love That's you. That's right. But he loves you enough to say Same. enough yes, is enough. enough. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Jesus, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. He, he says, does. take my yoke. In other words, no God has got a burden for us. He says, take my yoke. Take my burden. Yes. Put that yoke on you. I need you to do something for me. You're going to become my servant. So put my yoke upon you. Hallelujah. He says, and learn of me. He says, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Again, I want to ask the question. Woke or awake, yes. which one are you? And I love that. Yes. Choose wise. Yes. Choose wise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes. Thank you so much for praying. For me, listen. I'm not a popular pastor, and I'm okay with that because I have learned that it's not about the numbers. It's not about making people feel good. Do I want people to feel good? Absolutely. I would love to be able to preach something different. But you know what? I'm held accountable. That's right. When God provides His word, and I don't sure speak it. Then those who lose their souls in the end, their blood is on my head. That's right. That's right. I don't want anybody's blood on my head. Amen. Keep your. This is not an easy thing to do. Yes. Yes. And there are times when the men and women of God, you listen. You all don't understand. Let me share my heart. There are times when the men and women of God sit at home at night, crying for. God's people. Yes. 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 Because we see what's happening 
Because we have asked God to give us his heart to help us to see and to understand and to see his people the way he sees them and to love them the way he loves them. Hallelujah. Yeah. You connect with God's heart. Yeah. And when you connect with God's heart, what God feels you begin to feel. God just said, I just want to give you a little taste of what I feel. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're complaining about what you're going through, but let me just, just, yes. let, me just let you feel what I feel. Yes. Yes. The heart for my people. Yes. My creation who have gone together, who have gone together backward. Or who are all together backward. Mm -hmm. God is saying, I gave my life. Yes. I shed my own blood. Made the plan from the foundation of the world. I knew that mankind would sin and I devised a plan. Hallelujah. Even before I created the heavens and the earth, my plan was already in motion to give my life. My heart is set on the, my creation. I can just hear God say. And it hurts him to his heart to see what his people are doing today. Mm -hmm. You know why it hurts his heart? Because he says, I've given you everything you need. And he has a plan. I provided my blood to cleanse you. I gave you my spirit to keep you. I told you to be holy because I'm holy. In fact, I gave you a clue to help you. Be ye holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. Eschew evil. Do good. Yeah. Love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Yes. Encourage one another. Admonish one another. Yes. Walk up rightly before the Lord. Listen, if you sin, God said, I told you that you can confess your sin. Yes. And that I will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you. Yes. He does. And as the Holy Ghost, I'm leading and guiding. I'm taking you around all the pitfalls of life, but you've got to be willing to follow. Yes. I put my spirit within you to give you power so that when your flesh rises up, you can rise up in the spirit, man. Yes. Yes. And tell flesh to be quiet. Yes. Shut up. Yes. You ain't getting no food. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. You're not getting what you want. This ain't Burger King. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. The heart of God says, yes. I've done in my part. He has. His blood redeems. But we have to do our part. We have to do our part. Our part is to repent. Turn. Turn away. God, I missed the mark. Listen, you know you can do that? You can tell the Lord, I'm sorry. Not because you were caught, but because you were genuinely Godly sorrow. The Bible says that godly sorrow will work for you. Listen, when you sorry for real, that godly sorrow begins to work something on the inside of you. What does it work? It works repentance. It works repentance. It works in you a change of mind that leads to a change in your direction. You decide, I can't do this like this anymore. I, 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 can't, I can't sit on the fence and try to be part of the world and part of the church at the same time. i got to make a choice. And what happens, true repentance says i got to get off of the world's tower and get onto God's solid rock. Because that's, that's the only place where I find that I am safe. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you who have not been born again yet, you can be born again of the water of the Spirit. Those of you that have been born again, but you've walked away, hallelujah, you, you walked away from God. God. You, you begin to, that's what we call backsliding. Backsliding is when we turn away from God. We backslide. We, we, we go back the, 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 uh, against God. Backsliders. But you know what God said? God says, I'm still married to you. Yes. I'm married to the backslider. Yes. Hallelujah. I made a covenant with you. God says, I will not break that covenant. Although you have broken your covenant, God says, I am still committed to you. I know the devil has told you God don't love you anymore. Hallelujah. But God is saying, listen, come home, backslider. Come home, backslider. I made a commitment. God says, I will honor my commitment, but you must return. Hallelujah. Kick the enemy to the curb. Listen, you got to... <laughs> 
Amen. My God, thank you, Jesus. You got to let the enemy go. The enemy means no good for you. The enemy wants to destroy you. He has lulled you into a false sense of security. But you need to understand that all that the enemy wants to do is to see you destroyed. Right. The Bible says the thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus comes to give you life. I want to tell you today, listen. Awake unto God's glory. Awake unto his righteousness. Awake out of spiritual slumber that has kept our eyes dim and unable to see what is happening in our lifetime. Awake to the spiritual things of God. I know that he will save you. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. He will fill you with his spirit. He will provide you everything you need. Hallelujah. So that when he comes back, he will find your oil and your, your oil full and your lamp trimmed and burning bright. Right. The bridegroom is coming. Jesus is coming. Our God is coming again so soon. Will you be ready? Let us stand at this time. Be ready when he comes again. Be ready when he comes again. Be ready when he comes again. He's coming again so soon. Be ready when he comes again. Oh, be ready. Be ready when he comes again. Oh, be ready. He came to give you life and that more abundantly. What must I do to be saved? You must first be willing to believe and confess that Jesus is who he says he is. You must believe in God's word. Believe that God's word is true. Amen. Believe that God created everything that is. Hallelujah. You must believe that Jesus gave his life for you on a cruel cross. That he shed his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. That he died on the cross for our sins, but that he also rose again on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Amen. And that he has given unto all those who will receive him his spirit. Amen. To walk in you, to keep you, to be a lead, to be a guide, to guide you into all truth, to bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever he has commanded you. Be born again of the water and of the spirit. You must repent. Hallelujah. And then be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then even after you have been born again, we must be holy. Yeah. The Bible says that he that endureth mm -hmm. unto the end, the same will be saved. Yes. If you're here today Jesus. and you have not yet been water baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to invite you to come. Amen. Repent of your sins. If you repent of your sins, you can be born again. We have the water, amen. We have the baptismal pool. We have baptismal clothing. You don't even have to get your own clothes wet, amen. We have clothing for men, women, and children. I want to say this for those of you who are in San Diego or in the surrounding region and you want to be baptized. If you call us and let us know, we will schedule a time with you. We won't wait. You don't have to wait till the fifth Sunday, the fourth Sunday. 
Amen. We will make an appointment with you. Amen. So that you can be baptized in Jesus' name right away. God bless you in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Hallelujah. Thanks. Amen. Is there anyone today that have a special prayer, need a special prayer? If you're here today, amen, would you come at this time? Special prayer, unspoken prayer request. Or maybe you want to intercede on behalf of someone else. You can come at this time. Hallelujah. Amen. We see that none are coming. Those that are online, if you have special prayer requests, please call the church. Amen. At 619-501-9379. Leave a message. Amen. We will return your call. Hallelujah. But if you have a prayer request, leave your prayer request. Amen. Leave a way in which we can contact you. We will have someone to contact you to speak with you yes, in the name of yes, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So God bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for your anointing. Thank you for your word. Father, help us to be awake in this time. Yes, Jesus. Father, we truly understand the social ills of our time. Yes. We recognize, Lord, that justice is necessary. But, Father, we also recognize that without you, <clears throat> that none of it can be done. Without you, hallelujah, we can't love the way we need to love. Without you, the culture cannot change. So, Father, in order to change the culture, in order to change our mindset, yes. in order to change our way of thinking, we need you. Yes. For, Lord, only you can do that for us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for those also who profess to be brothers and sisters in Christ, but yet are not honoring your word. I ask that you would restore them into right fellowship with you. I ask that you would touch their heart. I ask that those who have succumbed to woke culture in the past, yes, Father, I ask that you would forgive them, Lord, as yes, they cry out unto you. Yes, There's someone today, Lord, they are within their hearts sorry, yes, oh God, hallelujah, yes, for the life that they have lived, Lord. for decisions that they have made. And they come to you today saying, Father, have mercy upon me, us, a sinner. Yes. And even though they come with bowed head. In a broken heart. Yes, you are the Lord. mender of broken hearts. Yes, you love Hallelujah. It. You are the one who not only you repairs, but you take our old stony hearts, our old broken yes, hearts, and you give us yes, new hearts. Thank you. Hearts that are moldable and pliable. Yes, the, oh, God, heart, willing Lord. to receive you and your word. Yes, you. I pray, Lord, restore the backslider. Yes. Those who don't know you, Come. save them thank in the, the name church, of Jesus. God. Father, yes, build the you. church once again. Encourage the church. Yes. Strengthen the body of Christ. Yes. Help us, oh God, not to acquiesce, hallelujah, to the things of the world, but help us to carry your word, to walk in your word, to do your word, to believe your word, to, to, to uh, give your word to others in the name of Jesus Christ. Help the church to be the church, to be the example, hallelujah, to be the lead and not the follower, to be the head and not the tail. God, allow the church to be the church so that the world knows the difference. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to get ready amen, for our Amen. For our offering, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for sticking on with us. For those of you online, thank you, amen, for joining in with us today. We're going to get ready to dismiss you, amen, while we, amen, wrap up some things that we need to wrap up here at Word for Life Ministries. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I want you to know we love you. And I pray that this word has touched your heart today to cause lasting change. I'm asking you today by the word of the Lord, be awake, be awake. rather than woke. Yes. Awake unto righteousness. Yes. Yes. Awake unto God's spiritual things. Amen. You will find that when you do that, you will become a catalyst and an agent for change in this world. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.